All right, everybody, welcome and thanks again for continuing to watch uh, my videos that I put out for you guys. This week, I'm going to uh, kind of start to break down the top five tools or my top five tools. And these are not going to be covered in any specific order. So, for example, today I'm going to cover Responder. And this is in my top five uh, tool arsenal. Like if you were to ask me name my top five tools that I use in every single pen test, uh, pretty much uh, Responder is going to be in that top five. So we're going to cover Responder today. And then every week after this, I'll cover another one of my top five. But let's jump into Responder. So what is Responder? Well, it's uh, it imitates several authentication services. It tricks Windows into um, you know, trying to authenticate to those services. It logs the credentials that it gets in that process of trying to get Windows or other uh, operating systems to try to authenticate. Now, this was created uh, by some guys, I think, from Spider Labs back in the day, from Trustwave. The original author is uh, Laurent Gaffey. He's the person that originally created it. So you can go look it up and uh, it's actually built in the Kali. So you, you have it in Kali and you'll see me as I go into demonstration here. So that's what it does. It basically sits on the network. When your machine uh, connects to the network, it tricks it into trying to authenticate using services that we really don't use to authenticate or uh, do resolution anymore. This includes NetBIOS name services, WPAD and LLMNR or, or you know, link local uh, multicast name resolution. And these are all kind of created to, you know, before we had DNS uh, in YG just like we do now. So what is LLMNR? It's basically link local multicast name resolution. It's based on DNS. It allows for local resolution on your local network. If for some reason you don't have a DNS server, um, we could use this for local name resolution. And we used to use it all the time. LLMNR has been in place since Windows Vista, I believe. It was actually a replacement for uh, something called NBNS or NetBIOS name server that we'll talk about uh, next slide over after WPAD. WPAD, Web Proxy Auto Discovery Protocol. Basically, this is used to discover proxy auto configuration files or PACs, um, you know, which is short for proxy auto configuration files. And these, if you've ever been in your browser and seen where it says automatically discover proxy, well, that's made possible by this protocol. And these proxy auto configuration files are the files that your machine would go get to auto configure the proxy in your browser. OK, so most of the time, if you look at most browser settings, by default, it's set to auto configuration for proxy. So if that's the case, this is one of the other ways that we could try to get your browser to try to auto -authentic authenticate through this fake proxy WPAD service that we stand up here with Responder. Then lastly, we have the NetBIOS name server. Um, this is used to used to be used instead of DNS for local name resolution. Now we almost always use DNS for local and, uh, you know, trying to get the resolve stuff on the Internet or local. But this is something that we had b back in the day before uh, we had DNS in wide use like we do now. And you still see it in use on networks. And it's primarily used for operating systems pre Windows 7. Uh, you know, you'll still see it, Windows 7 trying to do it as well, but that's where it was mostly uh, implemented. So all these responder just pretends to be all these services. And when your device connects to the network, it will reach out and say, yes, I'm a WPAD server. Yes, I'm an NBNS server or yes, I'm an LLMNR server. And your device will then try to authenticate to it by sending hashes or whatever uh, form of authentication I tell responder to ask for. And at that point, we will get those credentials. Now, I can tell you that this is a tool that I use almost in every single engagement. And to be honest with you, in enterprise and medium sized businesses, we almost always, always, always get some type of credentials using nothing but Responder. Uh, take a look at it and see how it works. So let's go. All right. So we got Responder set to run here. So we're going to go ahead and uh, tell it to run. You know, I'm just giving it the dash I option, capital I. We're going to use ETH zero for it to run. And it is running. All right. So that's all you have to do. Now, we can use certain flags to turn on and off things. But, you know, if you're going to go and do this, I just want you to kind of um, use it in this basic form first to see how it actually works. 
Now, I mentioned WPAT to you. You can see the WPAT proxies turned off. We could easily enable that with a dash W. And then what would happen is when someone tried to uh, go out with their browser, it would proxy through this and you would possibly get them to send some credentials your way. Okay, but we're not gonna do WPAD today. We're just gonna stick with it like this. And again, shout out to uh, Laurent Gaffey here who was the original author of the tool. So we got it running. What we're gonna do now is go and let three different operating systems, we're gonna let a Windows 7, a Windows 2016 server, and a Windows 10 VM all log, you know, connect to the network. And you'll see how uh, we'll have some hashes here that we can then, if we want it taken to John the Ripper and crack. So let's go ahead and let those machines authenticate. Windows Server here first. All right, so that one's logged in. Let's go with the Windows Client now. All right, that client's logged on. And then last, we're gonna log in uh, the Windows 10 machine. So now if we go back over and look at Responder, you can clearly see that it's grabbed some hashes and things from these machines logging in uh, to the network. And you can see where it actually said, hey, you know, I got a response. I sent some uh, information, I got a hash back. So we got some hashes here, some challenges that we can take. And if we wanted, we could try to do something with those. However, um, what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and stop Responder and we're gonna look in the directory where Responder logs these things, okay? Because what you'll find is it grabbed different kinds of credentials here. And I had other things going on in the background, like some other traffic and it will grab that traffic as well. Now, one of the cool things about this is what you wanna do in a pen test is once you get in the environment, put Responder on, let it run, and just let it sit there for the duration of the engagement, and you'll be amazed at what you end up finding, um, what it ends up grabbing for you. So I'm just gonna to go to the log directory. Now, if you're running this on Kali, your um, log directory would be the same thing. If you installed it somewhere else, then you might find something different. So there are several files here. Let's look at this uh, HTTP one first. And I wanna show you that it actually did grab that administrator hash from the Windows 7 machine, all right? And we can actually take that hash, put it right in the John the Ripper and crack it right away, all right? And then we can go into cracking those passwords. But there's also several other log files in here that you know, if you get time, you can play around and look at those. Now, I didn't have it actually doing any verbose logging here, so you're not gonna find much in these except for kinda just a repeat of what you saw on the screen, right? You can see where it actually sent the, sent the, uh, the machine sent the query and responder responded and said, yes, I'm that server. And then the machine, in this case, the Windows client, sent its hash to try to authenticate. So we can see that in the history here of this log. And that's where you can kind of see the proof that it was um, you know, poisoned successfully and we got the actual hashes there. So that's what Responder is used for. That's why it's great. <clears throat> Make sure you put it in your arsenal if you don't have it already. To me, I guess about um, 2016 or 17, somewhere around in there when I first started to play around with the concept and play around with it, uh, I immediately knew that it was going to be something that I kept in my staple. So if you didn't know, now you know about it, add it to your arsenal, play around with it. I think you'll be amazed. And for those of you that are just practicing at home, go ahead and run it on your home network. I think you'd be amazed at the stuff that you find there because one of the things that I often get here is when developers and people like that are running virtual machines inside the local corporate network where they're working on software and things, even their local machines that they don't have as part of the domain, those local hashes get sent and we can crack those as well. So hope you enjoyed it. Hope to see you again in another video.